Lieutenant Colonel Justin Constantine transitioned from the military to civilian life twice. The first time, he was a young lawyer with plenty of trial experience. But when I first left Dr. Judy as a lawyer in 2004, I had a normal transition the first time, and it was difficult. At that point, um, I applied to lots of places as a lawyer to work, was rejected from lots of places. But he was quickly called up as a reservist on his way to Iraq. We were on a mission one day in October of 2006. We were in an area where we knew a sniper was operating. He had already killed a few of our Marines there. I was shot behind my ear, and the bullet came out of my mouth, causing incredible damage. When the corpsman rolled me over, I was no longer breathing. Thanks to a brave Navy corpsman and some wonderful doctors, Constantine survived the unsurvivable. After a long recovery, he says his second attempt to find work was very different. People were kind of bending over backwards to help me. And I was very fortunate in that regard. Soon, a friend of a friend helped open doors, which led to positions in the Justice Department, the FBI, and even the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee. But most military personnel don't find that kind of support when they decide to finally hang up their uniforms. In the military, we don't do a great job of preparing our, our soldiers and Marines and, and other folks for that transition. So they kind of come out um, confused and a little bit overwhelmed. We can't talk about what our team did all the time and how the mission was. You know, here's what I did, here's what I was responsible for, here's the difference I made. That's, that's a little unnatural for some of us coming out of the military. A quarter of a million service members make this transition every year, but 65% of those who do get jobs don't last very long. It's not to say that the culture of a private organization is toxic. It just may not be what the veterans used to. So somebody has to help them. You have to understand what they're missing, what they're yearning for, the things that they've left behind after they've served in uniform. The solution for getting these veterans into the right jobs is twofold. Companies have to figure out how to find, hire, and keep the right people, while the vets need to learn how to apply, interview, and sell themselves. Things are getting better as companies realize the many benefits veterans bring and more people step up to help bridge that gap between the two worlds. I founded a veterans nonprofit 12 years ago called the GI Go Fund uh, after one of my best friends was killed in Iraq. We were all young kids. We didn't know what it meant to serve the military or help the military. None of us are veterans. And we were taking people to baseball games. We thought that was kind of what we were supposed to do, uh, not recognizing that there was a lot more need in the space. Soon, Jack and his friends were helping those veterans find jobs. We were helping them write their resumes, we were uh, helping them access job training, connecting with employers and advocating on their behalf. That small nonprofit has grown into JobPath and now helps 150,000 veterans every month. Uh, so I would get resumes from veterans who they wrote on their own. It's like a book report, you know, eight pages long, tell a story of their lives. Nobody knows how to format it properly. Not only does JobPath write and format resumes to be compliant with applicant tracking systems across the country, but they also provide free online job training, connect veterans with mentors, and help them choose from thousands of available jobs. The service is free and is offered to veteran spouses as well. But we also double that with services for HR, and that's kind of what we think is the secret sauce of JobPath. If you think of the United Nations, we're like a simultaneous trans translator. We speak veteran, we speak civilian, and we bring everybody together and connect the dots. All three of these men have also dedicated their time to teach the HR community to teach employers how to be a veteran-friendly workplace. Constantine and Morton recently published a book, From We Will to At Will. It helps demystify the culture and mindset of today's veterans to help businesses create a path for success. It also helps employers understand there is real ROI to these hires, from tax credits to the fact that veterans often come to the workplace with excellent benefits. I think it's a benefit to hire a veteran because they actually come with so much health care, so many benefits and services from the government. If you really look at it mathematically, you know, you could save money in a whole lot of places. Do you have the right culture to welcome veterans? It's not as complicated as you might think. Your organization needs to be an organization that has a purpose, that has a goal, that has a mission that a veteran can buy into and believe in. You don't have to be saving lives, frankly. I mean, many of the days in the military were very mundane for me, but I was a part of a coherent group that had a larger set of ethos and values. 
If you're ready to make a difference, check out www.yourjobpath.com. You can also purchase from We Will to At Will online. For the Screening News Network, I'm Jennifer Gladstone.